Hey folks, Cornell with YouTube Fishing Vids. Guys, I think I'm gonna take the cake for the most delayed mystery tackle box unboxing slash fishing attempt out there. It's been one heck of a ride. I was out here on this farm pond that I have uh, access to fish a few weeks back. Had an incredible day after a warm up where this pond completely thawed out. I thought I was going to have a chance with that thaw out to get back out here and maybe throw down a mystery tackle box uh, unboxing slash fishing attempt. Maybe even get the pelican out. but. I had another major issue with my hands and then we had a little bit of a freeze so I had to let the hands rest for a little bit longer there and uh, to get this mystery taco box pro box from this past month out and going was going to be a challenge so I've got it now it's literally about a month late but it's a killer box I've been so excited to break this thing open and fish it I didn't want to just sit there at the kitchen table and put the lights on in the house and get the uh, little cameras going and get myself just an unboxing video I really enjoy fishing with these things I really enjoy challenging myself and after the last video I did down in Florida and, and walking them out with my last mystery tackle box prior to this one. I, there's just no way I couldn't at least get out here and try and do something. So let's get at it. Let's see what we got inside the box. You've probably seen a handful of these baits. Everyone gets different boxes. They're not always the same, but you may have seen some unboxings and maybe some uh, slam attempts with some of these same lures, but they're all really, really great. Lucky Craft, the first one out of the box, guys, Pointer 95, that in-between size between the 78 and the uh, Pointer 100, and that's just a ghost minnow color. So that's ghost threadfin shad. So I'm hooked up. It's a little cloudy today. This is an ideal color when you have calm winds and you have clear water and usually bright skies, but it'll catch fish all the time. But that's usually the ideal conditions. A little cloudy, like I said, but that's gonna be a great, great bait to throw out on this little farm pond. Caught them on a jerk bait last time. Let's see if we can do it again. Next one out of the box, six cents lures, a square bill. So this is a six cents lure crush in a bluegill pattern. And this little pond is absolutely loaded, loaded with bluegill. So this bluegill pattern, Six cents crush is going to do some damage, I hope. I know the water temperatures aren't much more than 40 some degrees, barely 41 degrees. So if I get it in front of some fish, hopefully I'll get a reaction bright. It's 50 degrees today and it's going up to 70 tomorrow. It's nuts out here. The mid Atlantic is crazy and these weather conditions definitely put a hampering on when and how I could get out to fish. Here's number three out of the box. We've got in this box a Roadrunner, Randy's Swimming Runner. There's the uh, underspin. Randy, uh, Randy Howell swimming. That's a quarter ounce. That's a really cool kind of a salt and pepper speckled shad pattern idea. Quarter ounce, so it's real lightweight. That's going to be easy to throw in a shallow pond like this. Again, I don't think this pond's more than maybe eight to twelve feet deep at the most. So we got a little great little underspin there to play with. And here comes some soft plastics. I've got a net bake T Mac. How can I not go? How can I go wrong with it? great little trick worm. I got a trick worm in here in a uh, summer crawl. So the challenge on this pond, if you may have watched my last video, is that it's all mucked up on the bottom. I can't really drag shaky heads, can't throw Texas rigs. It's just a mess. So bottom line is with this bait, I'm going to go ahead and try and drop shot it. I'm probably going to cut it down, maybe a little more finesse action out of it, get a trick worm turned into a little drop shot idea and keep it above the muck and mess. See if I can get myself a fish on the soft plastic net bait. And then we've got another soft plastic. Here's Catchco Pro Series. Pro Catchco doing it up again, guys. They've got their own series. And this little bait right here is just a perfect creepy crawler. It's going to be the uh, Gator Hog. So a little watermelon red flake. Looks like a great bait just to drag across the bottom again, which I'm not going to do because it's so mucky, but I might even drop shot that. We'll see. So the deal is, guys, I don't know that I'm actually going to fish every one of these baits because the challenges are that I'm on a little pond. And, you know, I really wanted to get out on the Pelican. I really wanted to find some time where I can actually get out there, cover a lot of water, and do some really good winter fish but time is just not on my side. I've got some challenges with the normal day job and then just trying to fit in a good day of fishing with the day off that I have it just fighting the weather this time of year is a challenge so that's where I'm at. I'm at the farm pond. Let's see what it can do. Here it comes Carl Stash, <laughs> the awesome little Carolina kit that's got everything you need for Carolina rigging. One of the most popular and most classic techniques ever when it comes to bass fishing. That's a kit that gets it all said and done if you want to do a little Carolina rig fishing. Uh, half ounce deal with your clackers, your swivels, and your beads. So, folks, I'm not going to fish the Carolina rig today. It's just too mucked over and it's too heavy a weight to drag through this bottom of this pond. But that's what you get out of a mystery tackle box. A little bit of everything covering all kinds of bases. So one more piece of terminal tackle in there. It's going to be stickies. This is, again, one of the uh, deals that we can get out of the mystery tackle box for your terminal tackle. 3 aught offset worm hook. That's the hook I'm going to use for my potential drop shot trick worm deal. So I've got myself an offset worm hook. Perfect package. Again, a killer, killer box. Again, apologize for the late uh, deal on it but I'm fishing it. I'm not just going to pop this box open and throw you what's in it. I'm actually going to get out there. And the first
first thing I'm going to throw is a jerk bait. So let's get after it. I've got a couple hours actually before it gets dark out here. So let's see if this day produces something for the mystery tackle box from this past month. Okay, there's a good look at that pointer 95. That's going on first, folks. That's the uh, that's the ghost thread fin shad. Just an absolutely beautiful color. I'm anxious to break that out. So let's get that opened up. Since I'm on a farm pond, I'm trying to get as much casting distance to cover as much water as possible. I got the spinning tackle, seven foot one, medium fast, 12 pound braid, Albright knot to a fluorocarbon leader. That's only eight pound test. So I got the real, really dainty line so I can get a lot of action out of the bait, not to mention the invisibility with these pressured bass because this little farm pond gets a lot of pressure. So that's going to be a perfect setup right here, right now for this Lucky Craft Pointer 95 and it launches a mile. Got a great weight transfer system. So these baits are absolutely incredible in these ponds. So let's give it some uh, one, two, one, two, pause. One, two, pause, and, and the longer the pause, the better. This water again is probably barely 40, 42 degrees. And let's see if we can pull off the first fish with the first cast, and I just did. <laughs> that long pause gets them. I'm telling you guys, that's the first cast with a Lucky Crab Pointer. I'm down one bait. Little guy, there's a lot of little fish in here, but there are giants as well. But you saw it as it happened. That's the very first bass. Gosh, guys, it's, it's, it's 50 degrees out here. There's not much sun to warm it up, but these fish are definitely interested in that pointer. Isn't that something? Dink, dink, dink. That's okay. It's a fish in February. Well, there you go, guys. That's number one. Um, I got to throw it a couple more times. Literally, if I'm going to catch one fish on the first cast with the first bait out of the mystery tackle box, we got to try that again. Let's just see what happens. Fish it a couple more times. We'll move on to the next bait. If you're new to jerk bait fishing, if it's something you've never tried, or if it's something you have tried and you just just don't seem to feel it and it's just not happening for you and you see all these guys on all these videos killing it on jerk baits in the winter time and everything's working for everybody else but not you just slow down just get out here in these little bodies of water when it's really cold just give it a one two twitch and just stop literally just count count literally out loud to yourself if you have to one mississippi two mississippi give it at least three to five seconds when it's really cold if you're not getting any fish on that extend it up to eight to ten seconds just let your bait sit there some people think that these moving baits and these jerk baits just a hard plastic you just you don't think that a fish is going to creep up on it and just hit it without it moving but literally some of the biggest baddest bass in the lake pond or river will look at your jerk bait sitting there for 10 seconds without even a twitch and it's just kind of hovering there the slightest movement was just going to be enough to trigger those big bass to eat it. You will literally be sitting there not doing a thing like I am right now. And all of a sudden your rod will just be jerked out of your hand fishing a jerk bait. So slow it down, concentrate on the pause and count literally out loud yourself. And that'll actually improve your jerk bait fishing dramatically. If you can just discipline yourself. Another really good point about the way you're actually working these baits and the kind of action you're trying to put on these baits. The twitch that you're doing on a jerk bait does not have to be absolutely insane. It doesn't have to be a crazy heavy duty jerking motion. Sometimes if you have clear water and you can put the bait out in front of you right at your feet and it's deep enough that you're not snagging the bottom or anything, watch your bait. Give it really subtle twitches and see how much it's actually working for you. Sometimes you're not seeing your bait and you're thinking that you've got to give it all this extra, extra effort. But a lot of times that bait, like a Pointer 95 Lucky Craft, it has so much action going on with even the subtle, just tiniest little twitch of your stick. It's amazing how little you have to do to get those fish to bite. And in the winter time and in cold water, it's that subtle, real subtle twitch that sometimes gets them. So just vary how much you're given, how much action you're giving your bait, give it the long pause, and the jerk bait fishing should be on for you. On a little pond like this, I don't do much moving around. I've got so much water to cover with fan casts that I can literally stand in one place, cover so much water, and if I change up my baits and present something a little different, I could usually catch every bass that's willing to bite out of here with something. And I've got a lot of something to deal with with this mystery tackle box. So I'm gonna throw this trick bait for a couple more casts. I'm gonna go right to that six cents crush square ball. I'm really excited to throw that and see if I can pull something off. Then we're gonna move our way into the underspin and see what that does. Take a look at that six cents crush. They make some absolutely beautiful baits. So that's a uh, that's your square bill. That's going to be about two to five foot diver. It's about a little over two inches long and absolute perfect match to the hatch for a farm pond like this. There's no doubt. Look at that. It's slicked off. There's like no wind out there right now. Muted matted for this little bit of cloud cover I have. It's, it's just perfect. So that's probably going to go down about three to four feet with this 12 pound test fluorocarbon I have. This is a Lose Custom Speed Stick. This actually is their square bill crankbait rod. Six foot nine, medium heavy, moderate fast. It's an absolutely perfect setup for square bills. So I'm going to go at it and see if we can uh, do some magic like that. Lucky Craft did. See what we can come up with and see how uh, the rest of the baits do after this. 
I'm going to keep my rod tip a little high at first, depending on the depth of where I'm casting. I'll get a lot of muck on the bottom of this. So I think it's probably going to be going about the same depth as that Lucky Craft pointer. I'll just do some stop and goes, a little slow retrieves get it working and see if something picks it up. So I'm just running this a couple casts, watching it come back to me. It's got a really, really tight wiggle. Cold water, tight wiggle. They go uh, hand in hand. So when you're throwing these uh, square built crankbaits, the flat sided versions give you even a tighter wiggle. This one's not necessarily a flat sided per se, but it actually has a fairly tight wiggle compared to some baits I've seen. So that's a good thing. Again, super slow, creeping, crawling, just a real slight quick pause and then get it moving again. Hopefully it'll pick one up. The ideal situation with a square bill, of course, with that square bill is to get that deflection and reaction bite. In this situation, it's just a mucky bottom with very limited cover. So rocks, stumps, logs, those kind of things to deflect off are just not here. So what I'm doing is I'm just swimming it through the water column, giving it a pause, hopefully getting a reaction bite on that pause. And otherwise we're hopefully just gonna pick up a fish once they eat square bill crankbait. And they eat them in ponds, they eat them in, they eat them all day long. Even if they're not deflecting, it just depends on the situation. So here we are, just a slow creep and crawl and a pause, hopefully for that reaction bite. That's the muck I'm talking about. So this is getting down, like I said, maybe three to four feet as it gets closer to the shoreline. That's the kind of junk that's on the bottom that we, we just don't want to deal with when it comes to certain baits. So I'm going to keep my rod tip up a little bit higher, try and keep it above this nastiness and hopefully find one that wants to eat it. No luck on the square bill, surprisingly. I think if I keep fishing it, maybe running around this pond a little bit more with it, I might have some action, but I'm limited for time. I really want to go through all these baits and see what I can do. I am getting a lot of water covered though. I mean, I cast it, I fan cast that square bill all over this place with no bites and no big deal. I know that bait will crush it. That's an absolutely beautiful square bill, but there it is, the quarter ounce. That's the Road Runner Randy's Swimming Runner. That's just a great little swim bait, uh, underspin combo. So we're going to throw it out here, keep the rod tip high, Make sure I don't get down all the way to the bottom of that muck and see if we can get one of these fish to uh, be interested in this. A really slow retrieve, maybe a little twitch or two, maybe a pause to let it drop for a second and see if we can get one of them grabbed. A quarter ounce is absolutely perfect for this little pond. So with my rod tip high, let it get down three, four, five feet at the most. Let it sink a little bit lower to the bottom without getting it mucked up too bad. It, it's a great, great option for these little ponds. Anything more than a quarter ounce on a pond like this would just be way too heavy. So this is just an absolutely the perfect little bait to have in this. And it's just a finesse presentation too. So if these baits have seen it all. Something this small, barely a four inch little swim bait with an underspin. Look at it come through the water. It looks, it looks awesome coming through the water. Let's see if I can get a close up of this bait. See, there's that muck again there's that muck i'm telling you about so i might have to keep the rod tip a little higher as i bring it back towards the uh shoreline but let's see if i can get a look at that yep awesome that's a great great looking bait subtle tail kick and a little flash and it launches a mile Yeah, I definitely got a bite on that one. I got a little tap. I didn't mention that's 10 pound test fluorocarbon with 12 pound test braid. Again, it just launches it. It's a perfect, perfect combination with a 2500 series. This is an old school Shimano Stratic. Uh, it just, it just, they fly. So it's just a perfect, perfect combination for a little underspin like this. Again, with this really, really cold water, just a super slow, steady retrieve is all I'm doing. Occasionally, I might give it a little twitch just to entice maybe something that's looking at it. Maybe a pause to let it sink just a foot down and then start to retrieve again, just to see if I can get something on the pause. But just varying your retrieves, little underspins like this are a no-brainer. It's pretty much a do-nothing bait. Just reel it back to you and hope for the best. I'm staying optimistic, but the underspin just didn't cut it. So I fan cast it. I did everything I did with the same thing with a square bill. Not a bite, maybe one little tap, but uh, yeah, nothing like that jerk bait on that first cast. So here's the deal. I've got the finesse setup all ready to go. There it is. That's the Stickies 3 aught offset worm hook. I'm going to go ahead and rig up the net bait trick worm on it. I'm going to set that up on my drop shot. So there's the drop shot all set up with a cylinder style tungsten 1 8 ounce. I've got six pound test guys. It's really, really finesse. This water is really clear and I'm telling you these fish have seen it all. So I'm going to break out this net bait, rig it up and see if we can keep some just off the bottom. Check this out guys. This is a full pack of net bait trick worms, the T-Mac. 20 count. I got 20 baits in here. And man, they smell, they smell great. <laughs> these aren't like some garlicky deal. I don't know what the heck it is, but it actually smells pretty good. So that's a really, really great color. That's what they call the summer craw. It certainly is in summer, but it's kind of a uh, green pumpkin on one side with little black flakes and, and kind of just a uh, watermelon or green color on the other side. So I'm going to rig it up, 
Texas rig. So with all this muck on the bottom with this offset worm hook, it's a perfect combination in this situation. So I'm going to rig this up Texas rig. I'll go ahead and show you how I do that, which is pretty much a no-brainer. And with this size trick worm, it's exactly the size hook it needs. So that's why it's a perfect combo in this mystery tackle box that I've set up. All right, so here we go. So we're going to just do a classic Texas rig, just barely to the bend. I'm going to come out on the flat side. So I'm going to come out on the flat side. I'm going to bring it all the way to the bend and just barely cover the eye. I don't like with my drop shots to actually cover the eye because I want that line to help give that action that I need. And by burying your line in there on a drop shot, sometimes that hinders the action. So we don't want to do that. So we got that all centered and I'm going to go ahead and actually bury that hook in there. I'm not going to bring it out and to expose it, but I'm actually going to bring it in right where I see that line up and it's going to be perfectly concealed and perfectly perfectly straight so what I'll do at that point I'll just bring the point out just a hair so when the bite happens which I'm hoping it will we'll be ready to roll all right guys so let's get this drop shot out there it's already scented a lot of times I'm adding some crawfish scent or or some type of scent to it garlic whatever it may be but these are pretty well scented already so I'm gonna throw it out there let's see if some of these fish are closer to the bottom and want to pick up something uh, more finessey and with my drop shot guys I mean especially this time of year when it's this cold this is going to be an absolute do-nothing bait. It's going to hit bottom, and I'm literally just going to sit it in place. I know there's fish over there in that little pocket. There's just got to be, because this is the deepest side of the pond. This is where the wind's blowing, so pretty much there's no reason why there's not a fish there, and we already learned that with that first cast. So I'm going to give it a little subtle shake. I mean, barely anything with the rod tip, and then if I don't get anything after a couple, uh, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, all I'm going to do is slowly drag it across the bottom, barely a foot or two and then just let it sit again and it's just going to sit there and we're going to see if something just picks it up and wait for that tap i'm going to get a nice this is a little bit thicker wired hook it's not a super thin wire and this is actually my medium light action drop shot rod normally a little bit heavier rod with this size hook would probably be more ideal i just didn't want to take off the uh, jerk bait off that other spinning rod which is probably what i would put it on but this is going to work six pound test will definitely uh, give it some action and give it that finesse uh low visibility situation so just hang tight let's see if we can make it happen so I've got the full-size worm on here. What may have to happen, if I really need to get finesse I can cut that worm down quite a bit. I would probably take off this 3 aught offset worm hook, get a really light-wired, really itty-bitty little drop shot hook, still Texas rigged, and work a smaller piece of that trick worm out and see if I can get something to bite it. Uh, after that, we have that really great little catch go soft plastic little creature bait I could actually drop shot also. So we've got some great options in this box. I could care less. I could care less if I catch another fish. Just catching one fish is awesome just to get the skunk out of the situation. But just the fact that I'm fishing, guys, that's all I care about. And just to take a mystery tackle box, fish every bait out of the box, with the exception of the Carolina rig, I'm happy as I can be. So I'm just looking forward to warm weather on that. I know a lot of you guys are. So do you just, everybody hanging in there for you guys that have all that frozen water still and everything else. I've been seeing all your comments. You guys are struggling. I know how it feels with that cabin fever. But just, uh, you just hang in there, enjoy these uh, YouTube fishing videos to keep you warm and cozy and uh, before you know it you'll be fishing again. All right, I'll tell you folks, this is one heck of a way to get one heck of a fish on a drop shot, fishing a full-size trick worm like that. But in these situations, in this conditions, cold water like this, I'm gonna trim it down. I'm gonna take that uh, three-aught offset worm hook off. I'm gonna get a really dainty thin wired little hook, probably about a number one hook, maybe about a one-aught I should say, and I'm gonna trim that thing down. I'm gonna trim that bait down probably to just about that. And I'm gonna get that all hooked up. I'm gonna fish this drop shot and I'm gonna fish the rest of the afternoon with the jerk bait. So I think going to the drop shot and the jerk bait, even though I have that great Pro Series uh, creepy crawler bait in there by Catch Co., that'd be a great Tre Texas rig. It'd be great anytime if I'm pitching and flipping. Carolina rig, all kinds of great stuff, but I'm limited with what kind of conditions I've got here. So I'm gonna utilize the best baits out of Mystery Tackle Box that I have. I'm gonna get this drop shot set up, drop down. I'm gonna start covering water. So I fished enough in this one spot. Time to cover water, time to, try to, time to catch one more bass at least. Let's see what we can do. There it is, cut down. That's the little net bait, cut down to maybe four and a half inches. That's all I'm gonna use, folks. And I've got the exact same setup. The only thing I changed on this uh, was the hook. So I have the eighth ounce cylinder style tungsten lead, and now I've got an actual original rebarb hook by robo worm that's the rebarb hook in a one off the one i use with all my robo worms and all my finesse fishing when it comes to drop shot so this is a little bit meatier bait than that really itty bitty thin robo worm style deal but it'll be perfect with this hook so same deal we're just going to basically go in the head and i'm going to come out right at the bend not a whole lot come straight out on the flat side and again not covering the eye of the hook using that rebarb to keep that bait in place and this is just going to be a perfect super light wire hook for the skinnier part of the trick worm and it goes 
and just a little little bit of a hook sticking out back it out and there's your little drop shot weight so we're good to go so let's get that out there see if we can actually find one of these really cold cold farm bass and go from there i'm going to start covering water now guys i'm going to start running around with the jerk bait and the drop shot see if we can pick one up before the night is over all right we're moving not far we're just going to get in the position of this pond where i can reach water that i have not touched yet so we're going to just get around the bend here fish a couple angles and you know it's awesome fishing all the baits out of the box but when you have limited time and you know there's a couple baits out of the box that are going to be higher percentage fish catchers than other those are the ones we're going to stick with so we're going to go ahead and do the jerk bait like i said first and then after the jerk bait we're going to throw the drop shot in each spot and uh, then make another move and cover the whole pond before this night is over so i'm at my first spot right here let's go ahead and park it and see if that jerk bait wants to get them and if not test the itty bitty little half size net bait trick worm here we go okay so i'm back to where i started i just circled the whole pond and boy it is a tough day of fishing you know i'm not a very superstitious guy if at all but I've been told many times in the past by many folks that if you catch a fish on the first cast, you might be in for a tough day of fishing. And that's exactly what it's been. Not a single bite since that first cast. So one thing I didn't show you folks, let's get a close up look at the uh, one bait that I did not actually throw, the Catchco Creature Bait. Let's take it out of the package, at least take a look at it. That's a no brainer right there. Take a look at that beauty. Just a great little creature bait and a watermelon red flake so that's a bait that i could have easily put on that drop shot easily something i could have carolina rigged texas rigged but again with limited time and mucky bottom that bait's not going to happen today but it will down the road so let's go ahead and throw a few more casts in my little hole here with the jerk bait maybe the drop shot so we can get one more before that sun truly runs me out of here time to go folks the sun has dipped it's been a tough afternoon as it always is in the middle atlantic in the middle of the winter time but i dodged the skunk thanks to a bait out of the mystery tackle box pro box a lucky craft pointer 95 no doubt folks remember if you want to treat yourself to your own mystery tackle box of any type because they've got a huge selection going on right now when it comes to the opportunities and a different selection of boxes use my code ytfv short for youtube fishing vids get yourself ten dollars off the first box of your new subscription as folks as always i appreciate you joining me as always, I appreciate you subscribing. Until we meet again, over and out.